Yesterday, we started a series about the insanity of Nicola and the idea of bringing back the Badger <laughs> with the Diesel Brothers, business savvy as they may be. I am joined today by a, a businessman, EV enthusiast, uh, and uh, UCLA study law. What'd you, yeah, what'd you something like that? Yeah, there was a school I went to uh, back in the 70s. <laughs> wow. <laughs> called UCLA Law. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. Yeah, I went to a school in the 70s as well. It was called kindergarten. <laughs> so, uh, guys, it wasn't even kindergarten. It was probably preschool. But uh, anyway, uh, Randy Kirk's joining me. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. So, uh, real quick, I did want to say a quick shout out to newest ex subscribers uh, Randy, Mumbling Old Man, and Stinky Fingers. Great. Hmm. I got to say that on the channel. So that's a thing. What's the, what's the Randy mumbling old man thing? I don't understand that's, how that all came together. That's hilarious. It's Randy Witt and a, a different person named mumbling old man. But you can be my mumbling old Randy. That's for sure. I think you did that on purpose. I did not. I did not. I wish I had. That would have been clever. I would absolutely take credit for that. So, yeah, we were talking about the Diesel Brothers' absurd, insane idea. And again, we're not showing the video because I don't know if they would try to take my video down as a copyright thing. It obviously would be fair use, but I'm not going to risk it. It's kind of terrifying knowing that this kind of stuff is happening in our justice system, so it might open your eyes a little bit to understand. Nonsense. Oh, this is the guy talking. Yeah. This is the Diesel Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brothers. Diesel I'm Brothers sorry. guy. Not you. Not, not me. You talking. Not me. I've known Trevor for a really long time. I've watched him grow this company and put his whole, you know, blood, sweat, and tears into that. And I know that he was doing things the right way. Well, good. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad that two people now think that him and his, and him Trevor's, and Trevor. Trevor's him and Trevor. Yeah, yeah Trevor. I don't know. Maybe. I hope. Hmm. I hope yeah. so. Because the company was growing and it was thriving. Was it? <laughs> Because you weren't selling anything. There was no product when it was growing. The stock was growing on pure speculation and hype, as evidenced by the Hindenburg Report, which we discussed in yesterday's video. Not necessarily thriving like it once was now, but it was exciting, you know? A lot of ambition and a lot of passion. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's just hype, right? Well, okay, look, look. I've run a lot of businesses. <laughs> I mean, a lot of businesses. I think I've started 40, 45, something like that. And I've consulted with 400. I can tell you that even the most fraudulent, what appears to be or is tremendously fraudulent may not start out that way. All right. So you get into the project, you're moving along in the project, you've got passion, you've got a product, you've got an idea, you've got a name, you've got a brand, you've got a market. And you're like, yeah, we can do this. And then all of a sudden something pops up that gets into the way. And then you start going, oh, how do I cut a corner? Or you go, how can I get more money because I'm running out of money? Or you go, now this is not things I've done, by the way, I'm talking about others. <laughs> We've seen it. We've seen you it start, happen. Start, you, you know, so you start out with the be very best of intentions, but all of a sudden you're up against roadblocks that you don't know how to get past. And maybe you cut a corner. Maybe you do something just a little bit not right in order to get to next Thursday or to make your payroll on Friday or whatever it happens to be. I had some book when Friday isn't payday, I forget. Anyway, and so you get these situations where you're like struggling and up against it. And maybe Trevor just went too far when he had an issue like that. That is possible. There's the old fake it till you make it. And I think it is possible that he believed that all this faking it would result in making it. But the fake got so big, it got outsized in ways that it's just crazy. And the fact that he's saying, I've known him and he's a good guy, tells me you're a bad guy. <laughs> you're a bad guy. Uh, let's not defend someone. You could argue semantically that the case should be thrown out or rather retried. The result of the appeal would not be you're innocent. Right. The result of the appeal would be we'll do it again. Right. That's the best outcome. So. Uh, yeah, when Nickel canceled their Badger program in late 2020, there was kind of radio silence. They just took everything off their website and told the world 
they were not building anymore and they refunded the deposits. But uh, during our time promoting the truck, we had mentioned we were so excited to unveil the prototype at Neo World, which is a big event. And people don't know the crazy part is these trucks actually exist. They're real. They drive. They can open doors. They have seats. They are freaking beautiful, which you're going to see here. Some footage of these trucks were delivered before the 2020 event was supposed to happen. Uh, yeah, Nicola was ready to roll them out, these prototypes. Uh, remember, these are not production. They're just sh to show the prototypes. I went out there, put my name on it, put my friend's reputation, like everybody that I know, I got them to support this cause. Hmm. Do you want that on the record? <laughs> Randy, uh, I know you're not my attorney, but I'm thinking about making this statement about how I told everyone to get excited about this vehicle that we now know to have been problematic. Should I make this statement that I got everyone to support it? Everyone I know? Well, it, it would depend on it, on what harm you might have caused. So if you told someone to put down money that they didn't get back, if you told somebody to invest in the stock. That well, they I didn't didn't tell money, them to invest, but I know, got them excited. You, but you might, if you, if you, um, was fraudulent mm. you would have to intentionally uh make statements that were false in order to induce them to do something that later resulted in their harm yeah so you if, could be, if i you, didn't know it was fake i should be okay you probably if you were a hundred percent hundred percent i'm a hundred percent convinced that this is real if you were if you were a hundred percent bamboozled you're probably okay okay because i truly wholly believed in it and that's a big deal and Trevor knew that was a big deal, which is why even though things were going crazy for him, were they? Is that what, <laughs> is that what we're, how we're, and he was having, you know, he was getting attacked from every angle. Yeah. He stood firm on his promise of getting Badgers built. So obviously one of the main allegations against Trevor was that the Nicola Badger wasn't real. Everybody was saying it was fake and it was never coming and it was never going to be. And it was just a fraud and just a scheme to get, you know, deposits. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I, I, it seemed to me at the time that the scheme was not, well, in the early days, it might have been to get deposits, although $100 deposits or even $1,000 250 I think. Yeah. 250, yeah, $250 deposits, you need a lot of those to make a significant dent in your overhead, because he had a bunch of overhead at that point, um, not to mention the cost of actually getting into production. So I, I don't think getting deposits would have been, besides, you're not actually legally supposed to use the deposits for your for your uh, your day to day business activities, Nicola uploaded to their channel talking about how the Badger is never made, uh, never made a functioning prototype. But the vehicle, all that stuff was happening. These trucks were just sitting there in storage. So now he's saying that Nicola themselves said the truck isn't real, but I'm telling you they are. They were sitting in storage. <laughs> they decided to cancel these programs because they needed to show show their shareholders they were seriously, uh, you know, focusing on the big rig stuff. So, Randy, I need to show my shareholders that I have not been committing fraud. Should I hide the truck that I built that works? <laughs> yeah, that was the very first thing I was thinking a second ago. It's like, okay, take me to the warehouse. Let's go ahead and roll them out. Let's drive them down the street. Let me, let's get the jury. We'll take the jury. They'll come out to the warehouse. We'll all get, we've seen that on the, on the TV shows, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay, let's get that jury pool together. Put them on a bus. Take them out. And then we'll let them drive these vehicles and make up their own mind. Yeah. In early 21, we began negotiating with Nicola to purchase these programs from them. It was the most complicated, one of the most frustrating process of my life to get this deal done because there were some really big numbers. We're talking about tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars. It wasn't a small amount of money. The structure of the Badger program right now as it sits is myself, my partner, Cole Cannon, who is a attorney with mm. a website that explains that the law is a tool you use to abuse people. Basically what? <laughs> his, his website is going to show up in a court transcript at some point in his career. Uh, and so him and his attorney are, are partners. They're, they're putting in tens and tens and tens of millions. How much IP is there to buy? That seems like a number that might be too high to purchase. Okay. 
So yeah, and and he is literally a wizard. The only uh that's all I can say about Cole is he's so persistent and disciplined, smart on top of it. And there were probably 10 times where he said, forget it, but it's just too much. But he grinded through and got the deal done. So that brings me to today. So the first thing I want to explain to you is the structure, the kind of deal. And this is where we teased this yesterday because this is crazy. We purchased the rights to it. We can't call it a Nicola, but we purchased the rights to the Badger. Uh, It's going to have some new name. And me, this diesel bro, and Cole, his lawyer, and three or four of their bros have been nominated to positions on the board of directors at okay, Nicola. So this at Nicola at Nicola. So Nicola can, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I am, I am getting confused now. Yeah. So are they setting up a separate company that they then purchase the rights? That's or, unclear. That's and, unclear. And then there's a company called Nicola that is this the original Nicola that uh-huh. they buy? Did they yes. buy the corporation in bankruptcy or? It's very unclear. Oh, very unclear. Who on earth would nominate this bonehead, his slimy weasel lawyer, and their three bros to a nine person board? They would comprise the majority of the board. Who would nominate them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Who? Is there a... Trevor's Holding Company. Trevor's holding company yeah so he owns still a little under five percent of nicola and as a five percent shareholder he was able to nominate board members uh which the company flatly rejected as these people not one of them has any executive experience and really any industry experience apart from driving cars and three of them we can't even figure out who they are so wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So Nick, so so Trevor put up these nine people. A five people, yeah. Five people, five people. And the holding company came in and said, we can't accept these people. No, no, no. So oh. Trevor owns this holding company, which holds his yeah. shares. That okay. holding company put these people up. Okay. That holding company is Trevor. Okay. The existing board of directors said, you must be mad. <laughs> you are out of your mind. You want a bro takeover? That's what... Des- and they're like, no, we want to take it over because we want it to be exciting again. Uh, we had enough excitement. We want to build vehicles, man. We want to actually yeah. make stuff that is stuff. And so they're very, and the board of directors flatly rejected it. But in this, the diesel bro himself is explaining, no, no, the, the, <laughs> just like Trevor's appeal is proof that he's innocent. Our nomination is proof that we're going to be on the board. It's going to come to a, it's going to come to a vote. It's going to come to a vote and we'll be on the board and we will be able to uh, run the asylum. I think that's what they call it. So, and, and so just one last thing here to help me be unconfused. There is a Nicola board of directors overseeing a Nicola company that still exists in some form and is still doing business. Mm -hmm. That's right. They still, they still believe to be a semi truck maker of, electric and or hydrogen okay. fuel cell vehicles. Okay. All right. And they want to commandeer that company to to make the Badger with what money I'd be very curious to know. They probably think they can borrow the money or issue new shares to get people super jazzed again about their wave runners and UTVs and uh and all that. So that's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, the only things that came along with it was the intellectual property of the Badger and the NZ and the Wave Runners and that kind of stuff. But we did not uh, purchase the rights to use Nicola corporate name, even though they're a partner of ours still on the deal as a minority partner. Wait, you paid tens and tens and tens of millions and Nicola still owns some of the rights they still own part of your new company and you're trying to do like a hostile takeover from a position of no power at all boy it's very very confusing and it, it sounds <laughs> it's i mean it, i i hope i hope that the money that they well i don't care <laughs> if they lose their money but if they spent tens of million dollars of dollars for the intellectual property um and I hope they have a way to get it back if things don't work out well. 
It's them and us and me and Cole are the majority owners. And then you've got Nicola and they have a loan against some of the assets, but it was a great deal for everybody. Helped them unload a bunch of stuff that wasn't doing any good. And it gave me what I've been waiting for for so freaking long, guys. This has been such a rough process. Uh, and we're a long ways off from making any money on this deal. That, that makes it more complicated. So you, you bought assets that were encumbered. Did you really buy assets that had loans on them and give Ooh. them part of the company? What assets are the loans? Yeah. Holy mackerel. I, I, so. Because the and IP these... has no value. The IP has no value. Transcript could go on for days. Could go on for days. <laughs> There's a few more exciting parts of it, which is evidence that the diesel bros have no idea how vehicles are actually manufactured and no idea what they're talking about. And that will be part three, which is coming tomorrow. So I do want to thank everybody in the comments. Uh, I need you to tell me uh, how much would you pay for a Nicola Badger? Um, and which would you rather have a Nicola Badger or just a wild one on your face. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Clearly the second. Yes. Because I've never tried that. And, you know, I'm, I'm into new experiences. If you appreciate this content, you guys like subscribe, throw some support, whatever you got to do. Head over to Randy's channel. Who knows? Maybe he's made a video or over 5,000. And uh, everybody else, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you in the thrilling conclusion of this incredibly dumb saga.